Hello and welcome to uh, Adelaide <coughs> Psychic Fair Online. We had a bit of trouble uh, a few minutes ago going through the normal channel, so we're going to do it live today. And um, just to keep you up to date, Adelaide Psychic Fair is normally on in the city uh, at 230 Flinders Street. And uh, we would normally be there uh, every third week of the month up until the end of the year. But with the coronavirus, we're having to uh, do some unusual changes and we're running everything online. And if you want to check us out, go to Market to Market Events page. That's one way of getting in touch with us. Or you can go to uh, the Adelaide Psychic Fair page on Facebook. We have a separate page for that. And you can contact me on 0412 in order to participate in the markets or to get yourself broadcasting here and promoting your own product. Now, today we're going to be talking to Cy Glasson from Garden Gypsy, Shop 3, 36 Tapley's Hill Road, Royal Park. And you can contact her on 043 352 1327. And she is doing um, skin care services. Now, this is a very wide, broad title, but believe me, when Sai tells you what's going on, you'll understand a lot more about uh, what's going to, uh, what's happening with the products that she promotes. Now, I'm going to bring Sai up and we will start all over again. Just got to unmute and bring up there. Once again, hi, Sai. Uh, sorry for the uh, sorry for the mix-up. It seems that we weren't broadcasting last time, but we're we've got little numbers in the corner, so it seems that we are broadcasting now. Now we uh, are. So now sorry we are. For everyone who was <laughs> looking at, at it from today. <laughs> yeah. We've got a couple of people we'll say hi to just to get it going. Uh, Dana Harris, Hunter. hey, how hi. are you? Uh, we also have Karen Berry, hi to there, hi. and Sherry Eaton, who is watching in. Thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Now, Sai, I'll take you right back to the beginning again. Yeah. If you could <laughs> let people know just where you're situated, how you're situated down there, and what it is you do. Okay, so we are at shop number three on 36 Tapley's Hill Road in Royal Park, and uh, it's a nice nice little rainy day outside today so <laughs> it's been interesting on the on the um drive to work today uh getting blown all over the road but uh it's been it's been nice but um yeah so we're on Tapley's hill road in royal park um we do mostly skincare remedies so as you can see from behind us uh health and wellness olive oil based remedies so um, most of our skincare remedies are olive oil based. So we have remedies for uh, dermatitis and eczema, cracked split fingers that get really painful. Um, and a lot of them are from um, uh, lots of hand washing at the moment, actually. Uh, we do itchy skin uh, from, well, or any kind of itchy skin cream, uh, mature skin, bruising, weak flaking nails, um, sun, um, Sunburn, kitchen burn, insect bites, a uh, whole range of stuff. Oh, and we have a new baby range too. So that's been really exciting. Lovely. And we will go over that now because um, just take it easy. We've, we've got the best part of an hour. So go take your time. <laughs> But being on TV doesn't mean to say you've got to rush through it, all right? Oh, uh, that's that's the anxiety and the nervous <laughs> talking. Like, I'm not racing, I'm trying to get it all out. So. <laughs> Take your own product. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> now, you have products that are in supermarkets, and rather than give us a full list, just let us know what sort of supermarkets they are and what the ranges are in the supermarkets. Okay, so we're in quite a few Foodland stores across South Australia. We're also in Salt Healing and uh, Therapy Clinic, which is in Smithfield. Sherry, uh, we can ship to the States. Yes, we can ship to the States if you want. Uh, the freight is a little bit more expensive, but I recommend putting in a, a bigger order so it's worth, worth your while a bit more. I think it works out to about $40.00. Um, 
Australian dollars, which is about 28 US dollars to ship anything up to a kilo over to the States. So I did actually check that out for a few people um, last week. So we can do that for you if you want. Um, we're also located um, at Parafield Airport Liquor Store. Well, they've got an alcohol rub and they have blacksmith scrub um, at Parafield Airport and the Royal Park Deli down the road. So we're actually in 16 stores across the, uh, across the state. Some have the baby range, some don't, um, and each different, each different manager selects different products that they want. And we're recently in Valley View Foodland and Yorktown Foodland too. Absolutely brilliant. You're getting out there and that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, in yeah. a few minutes, I'll put up the um, how that can, people can contact you, your web page and the like. And I'll put that in the comments as well. Yeah. Um, now, seeing as we're going through the Corona, I've got to get that right. It's not called Corona. Corona uh, COVID-19, as they want to call it. Yeah. You have a range of hand products, which you are now putting out yeah perhaps that would be a good place to start today and um we we have another gentleman who seems to have a question i'm not sure what his question is but yeah joseph you are more than welcome to ask questions along the way uh, so long as they relate to the products or how you can get them mm -hmm. we're more than happy to uh, answer the questions as we go along Okay. I'll leave it up to you, uh, Sai, so you can just explain what your product is. Okay. Well, we've got a couple of different things that we're trying to bring some awareness to at the moment. So obviously during this, uh, I, I like to call it the COVID crisis. <laughs> so um, throughout this COVID crisis, uh, everybody's obviously um, being super vigilant about hygiene, making sure they're washing their hands, uh, they've got soap, they've got hand sanitizer. Um, most people are staying indoors and in isolation, which is great to see. Um, here in South Australia, our rates have really gone down. Um, so our rate of infection has gone down and um, apparently that's due to such such high compliance with people uh, staying in isolation, so that's great. Um, but uh, in the meantime, um, from all this hand washing and sanitizing and everything, a lot of people are getting really cracked split fingers um, and hands that are red raw from all this hand washing. So I did actually want to um, bring some awareness into uh, what you can do to help with that. Um, and, and a couple of little things because there's a lot of misconceptions out there in relation to um, keeping good hygiene um, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, one of the things that people think is that it has to be uh, a soap or it has to be, oh, Sherry, you've got super dry hands from too much washing as well. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty common at the moment. So yeah, um, the, one of the common things is that people think it, that they have to have a, a liquid soap or a normal soap, anything that strips the skin of oils. And that's, that's actually not true. You can actually have a cream cleanser to clean your hands. Um, it's not, and cream cleansers aren't as damaging to the skin, aren't as drying as your normal ones, and they're still going to get rid of a lot of germs and bacteria that's sitting on the skin surface. Um, even if you look at um, QV wash, for example, QV wash, uh, that's really good at keeping the skin clean, um, and that's a cream cleanser. That's not a soap based cleanser. Um, on the back of the Aquam, sanitizer which is one of the one of the better sanitizers in our country on the back of aquam it says um it'll say wash hands with qv wash because they're promoting their product as well but their wash is a cream cleanser so one of the biggest misconceptions is that you have to have something that strips every single oil off your skin to keep your hands clean and that's not true so um, here at garden gypsy we have uh two different clean uh cream cleansers that you could use uh, one is Lavender Falls. So we, I absolutely love Lavender Falls. I use it on my face every morning actually because um, it doesn't leave your skin really dry. It cleans away um, the dirt and oil but doesn't leave your, your hands or your face or whatever, your skin really, really dry. And uh, it does contain lavender. So obviously if you, um, if you don't, if you're allergic to lavender, you, you don't touch that sort of thing. So the, the other thing is you just got to be smart about um, what you see in the product, in the in the uh, ingredients list. So um, 
yeah, always check the ingredients and make sure you're not allergic to anything in there. The other product that we have, which I love, one of my favorites is blacksmith scrub. So blacksmith scrub has tea tree, eucalyptus and orange oil. And all of those are very, very good at removing dirt, grease, oil, germs, bacteria, the antibacterial, antiseptic properties. Um, some of them are anti, got some anti-inflammatory uh, properties as well. It's very, very good. Um, this is actually used for a lot of mechanics um, and people who um, get uh, like lots of grease and dirt and oil on their hands. Um, and it can even be used for people who do get dermatitis and eczema on their hands. Um, obviously, if you're one of those dermatitis sufferers that have uh, a sensitivity to any of those oils, obviously, you know what you can use. Um, so if you know that um, tea tree oil is going to irritate, you don't use it. It's as simple as that. Um, but it, it is a very good cleanser. Now, what was that? What was that question that just popped up before? Are these made clean? I don't understand what that means. I'd probably say that they're asking, is it you know, organically made? Are there other elements in it that are not organic? That sort of thing. Oh, okay. Is that what it was? Okay. No worries. So the products are, I'd say, 98% natural. Uh, those two have a synthetic preservative in it just to give it a longer shelf life. Um, we do have natural preservatives in um, some of our other products, um, but those cleansers, because they are a wash off, we can we can use a synthetic preservative. But all the other ones are, are natural ingredients. So does that sound about right, Rory? Sounds about right. Yep. And uh, what's this next one come up? Oh, okay, it's a comment. <laughs> I'm saying I should put my glasses on so I can read this a little bit better, but oh well, I don't want to get too much reflection from my glasses. Um, so yeah, so anyway, going back, yes, natural. Yes, they're natural. Um, and Sherry, I think you said that you get really uh, dry hands, you get cracked hands and everything. So that's what sapwood is for. I love sapwood. Sapwood we've actually had for 13 years. We've actually had this product for a very, very long time. And it's helped to, um, it's for soothing painful, split, cracked uh, fingers and hands that um, mostly cause from too much hand washing. Um, the reason why I say I've had that for 13 years is because it actually goes into the story of how I come across um, having this uh, business using extra virgin olive oil because um, right, in, right in the beginning, it, it came about because my mum bought a property that had 600 olive trees. Um, it had 600 olive trees and I was thinking, mum, what are you gonna do with a property that's got 600 olive trees? And she goes, oh, I don't know, I'll do something. She goes, oh, maybe I'll make olive oil. I said, oh, well, what are you, what are you gonna do with the olive oil? She goes, oh, I don't know. She goes, Serena. She goes, oh, why don't you make cream with it? I thought, yeah. And and the idea came with um, like the cream, like olive oil. We think about it. When you think about it, Italians use olive oil. And I tell you what, I don't think I've ever seen an Italian with bad skin. So <laughs> that's where the idea came from. And my mum turned around. She's always had these really bad crack split fingers because she's always cleaning. She's always doing the dishes. She's she's always doing something. And so she had really bad crack split fingers. And she said, oh, she said, Sierra, to make me something for my crack split fingers. And so I did. And that's what sapwood turned out to be. And then um, another person wanted something similar. And I just kept getting a lot of people coming up to me wanting different remedies for different things. And um, sapwood was so popular that I ended up um, obviously labeling and bottling it and um, selling it elsewhere and it's, it's very very uh, very effective so um, yeah so it's actually one of the first ones that I ever came out with so um, just to take you off track a little bit sure um, there's, you've had some inquiry here already about sapwood oh, and really? about stuff going overseas yeah. Uh, if people mention this program that you are now on, what are the chances of getting something at a discount? Oh, there's there's possibility. <laughs> I haven't thought about it that, that far ahead, actually, but I'm sure if you inbox me and you let me know that there's stuff that you want, 
um, then I'm quite happy to work something out. So yeah, if you want a couple of items, that's even better. So because I do have a, a few more products to go through because even though uh, sapwood is is one of the ones that people are really wanting at the moment, mm. um, the other thing that all this hand washing is caught is damaging is fingernails. So there's actually yeah. a lot of people getting fingernail damage. Yeah. And we have tough as nuts for that one. So <laughs> I know. It's amazing, isn't it? We have we have a remedy or we have a we have a treatment for everything. So tough as nuts is a uh, natural nail oil um, and it's got a lot of nut oils in it, hence the name tough as nuts. And it actually helps to bring vitality and strength back to your nails. Um, and it's it's about, this is 19.95 for a bottle, but you get 400 drops in a bottle and you only need about one drop for every couple of nails. So it's gonna last for ages. Um, but that's one of the things that's really, really good for your nails at the same time. So for those people who are wanting sapwood, you might actually want to get like pair it up with tough as nuts if you've got bad nails as well. Because a lot of times if people have got bad hands, uh, it's pretty common for them to have fairly weak nails at the same time too. Um, so that's something else. But yes, I would uh, definitely offer a discount. Uh, I don't know how much yet. Send me through an order and I'll let you know. <laughs> 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 Sorry to put you on the spot. Like, like, Sorry to put you on the spot like, like free that. shipping or something. Mm. That's ten dollars savings straight away. So, yeah. um, so I might be able to do that. It just depends where it's got to go um, because, yeah. yeah, freight costs are all different, all different places. So, let me know what you're after, and I'll, I'll work you out a, a discount. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, on a couple of others that we've done, somebody is. You know, they've said if you order two or three items, we'll throw in a small bottle of something else. Uh, that's up to you, but it's just uh, people who are listening in now or in the replay because they'll have to post this one separately because we haven't gone on the normal channel. So, mm -hmm. um, but we have uh, Sherry back on again. She says, I do know a lot of people who use your products, oh, always lovely. looking for natural products. And it, that's the truth everywhere. I mean, now with, a lot of the um, conditions that are going on, we're all becoming more critical of what we're buying and we're becoming more aware of the natural elements that we, uh, we're trying to use rather than going for the chemical stuff. So it's always good to have somebody like yourself who does the natural and the... What do you actually call yourself? A herpetologist or...? A herbalist. Herbalist. Okay. Yeah. I have right. a lot of backgrounds and I've got a lot of experience from a lot of different areas though. Mm. So, um, the, yeah. The products are going to be based on um, herbs and natural products all the way through. Yeah. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any gentlemen out there watching, that I've been in this shop and there is a mass of herbs along either side of this shop. And yeah. uh, I, I get lost every time I go in there and I look at these things and I wonder, what the hell do you use that for? But <laughs> ask Cy, I can guarantee that Cy will fill you in on absolutely everything that's in that shop. <laughs> Sorry to take you away from where you were. No, no, that's good, yeah. The question I had um, for myself personally, yeah. you were using the tough as nuts. What came to mind had nothing to do with fingernails, <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, we but won't say that I, I, both my wife and I suffer from uh, toenail problems. Can, can it be used for the for the toenails as well? Uh, basically, this toughest nuts nail oil is for restoring strength and um, vitality to weak, uh, like very weak, soft nails. Mm. So if your toenails are hard, then it's not something you want to go for. Um, toenails are a bit tricky. There's a there's a lot of different things that um, can cause toenail problems. So it's one of those things that I tend to like to, to see either a photo of or someone come in and see me. Um, a lot of the time, though, I do tend to refer to a podiatrist because podiatrists just know almost everything there is to know about toes and toenails, and, and they're really good. Um, sometimes, totally gross, yeah. really Sorry? Totally gross, but totally. really good. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I've got an affiliation for skin and podiatrists love their toes. So, 
Um, <laughs> we, we all have some weird quirk that we like that people think, what the hell? So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's all good fun, isn't it? Uh, mm. Sherry is back again. Let's see what Sherry's got to say. Yeah. Oh, you're a, uh, you're a green witch, okay. a.k.a. a kitchen witch. And a white witch. And, I'm a oh. white witch and green witch combined. Definitely. Lovely. Yeah, love it, uh, Sherry. Where do you want to take it now? Sorry, I'll cut you off and turn you in the direction you didn't want to go. And... <laughs> I don't even know where we were where we were heading before. That. <laughs> um, what was that? Tea tree tea? oil good for toenails, fungal fungal infections. Yeah, tea tree oil for fungal infections for sure. So, yeah. Um, but no, that's right. There's there's lots of different things. Um, what I've actually done recently mm -hmm. is because of because of um all the hand washing and, and all the alcohol rubs and all that kind of stuff that people are using. Um, doctors are actually finding an increase in patients coming to them complaining about um, terrible skin. Um, and they and a lot of the time uh, doctors are either prescribing cortisone creams or they're just prescribing a normal moisturiser. So <laughs> um, they're, they're basically mm -hmm. just doing that. They don't, um, it's not something that they're used to getting a lot of. Um, and especially because they're saying, oh, it's contact dermatitis and yada, yada, yada. It's not necessarily contact dermatitis. Um, there, it could be, um, I'm actually just trying to bring this up because I've put together this document for, for, for different people. So uh, can you read that? Treatment tips for intense dryness and cracking caused by excessive hand washing. So I've actually put this uh, document together. So um, hand washing can be, uh, sorry, the um, problems with the skin can be from like the too much hand washing because of um, like dryness. It can be friction related. It can be a contact dermatitis as in you might be having allergic reactions to mm -hmm. soaps and sanitizers. Um, so, and it can just be um, damage to the skin's uh, skin's layer and I think doctors are going to be seeing a lot of people who have been using metho on their skin. Uh, have you heard much about that, Roy? Uh, it sounds like something Donald Trump would suggest. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm impressed that the that. Americans are managing to, to survive and not dying from some of the remedies that that man is coming up with. <laughs> um oh joseph God, i think you funny. might have the wrong channel joseph uh, i'm not sure we can help you with your love life on this channel uh, well, unless it's dealing with her uh joseph wants his question answered but unfortunately oh, it seems to be life. about his love yeah. life so i'm not that's sure we can help you there joseph um <laughs> i've heard of people using um you know, metho as in after they've been using like uh, engine oil or something like that to do a quick clean yeah. and then you're using hand soaps and that to remove the the metho but um it's not something that you know, granny would have suggested you use if you want to keep your hands in good nick so no no. no, I remember when I was a kid and I got my ears pierced, we used metho to help keep, keep the piercings clean. Yeah. So, like, in very small amounts like that, yes, like, that is kind of okay. But metho is still a very, very toxic substance. So it can cause mild poisoning. Um, it can cause dermatitis and eczema. It will damage the skin's natural barrier. And the problem is... When your natural barrier of your skin is damaged, you're actually more prone to infections. Um, so doing too much hand washing, which is causing these issues, is actually causing you more damage long term as well. So uh, I can't stand the blanket statement contact dermatitis. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty well uh, it's used a lot of the time, unfortunately. Uh, about I am so, so no. Is that so not offended? I'm hoping that's not offended. No, I, I, I am so I'm not. no offended no. By, about the top <laughs> statement. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Look, some people might be offended by what I've said, but look, it's a personal comment. I I think the um, it's a person who needs to okay. think before he talks, and unfortunately he doesn't, and other people are paying the price for it. So, you know. Um, yeah. And some of the things, I mean, using detergent on your hands, brilliant, but suggesting that you use it internally, 
Mm, not so smart. I mean, most people know that you take the two, you're going to be chronically ill afterwards. So, yeah, sorry, exactly. again, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent there, and I, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. I actually had uh, someone call me because they saw me in the paper the other week and were said to me that borax was good to be taken internally for uh, arthritis. And he was trying to tell me a few different things. And um, I said, well, I would never suggest ingesting borax. Borax is considered a poison. And if it's a poison, it's not something you generally ingest. So um, it sounds like Trump's not alone out there with some pretty pretty out there thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, true, Shui. He's yeah. Uh, he's got people drinking stuff that they shouldn't be thinking about drinking, and, oh and that's God. that's a worry when the president of a, a place like that is making people who are doing their desperately <laughs> the, do the best to heal themselves, and then mm. he's coming up with suggestions that are no good. Yeah, and this yeah. is why you yeah. want to talk to people like Siona. Mm, that's right. Because well, we, do, we have the more natural uh, perspective of things. So, even though I'm a herbalist, I do have background in uh, pharmacy. So, I used to work as a pharmacy assistant for a while. I absolutely love chemistry and biochemistry. So, I've got a real affiliation for that, and and just. Chemistry just sticks in my head really well. So um, in combination with the herbalist side of things, it's oh, it's such a good combination. And uh, in the past, I've um, done social work too. So I've got I've got the psychological side, the science side, the herbal side. I've got a bit, bit of like a bit of every side going on there. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Master of many trades and master mm. of none, they say. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, so we, we have covered hand washing. We've covered, we have we've covered the creams and lotions that we have in I order think. to prevent dryness from the skin, and we've done the best for the fingernails. Yeah. Um, Another thing, just, just quickly, in relation to uh, the moisturisers as well, for the people who are getting contact, uh, contact dermatitis, oh, my God, that's, that word just got stuck there. For people who have eczema prone skin or dermatitis prone skin, um, a product like Sapwood isn't going to be your best option. So people who have eczema prone skin and dermatitis prone skin, they have uh, a different a different skin type altogether and they need a different product. They need something heavier. And what we recommend, I'm gonna put this in here, is Buddha Balm. I think a few people might've heard of this one. Hang on, yeah. I'll just... Now, now you should get a better shot. Oh, there you okay. go. Cool. There we go. So Buddha Balm is the one that we do tend to recommend for people who do have um, those those really, really dry skin types. It's a lot heavier. So, oh, this is this is brand new one, so I can't show you. Um, <laughs> so, but it does have uh, cocoa butter, beeswax, avocado oil, olive oil. So it's got a, like really, really heavy ingredients in it. It's got things like echinacea extract, wheat germ, um borage so some really really good healing um healing oils in there as well and we call it buddha balm because it contains himalayan rock salt so it might sting a little bit when it goes in but we always say stinging is good burning is bad so um so if it stings it usually means it's okay it's penetrating it's, it's cleansing um, but if it burns, it generally means your body's having an allergic allergic reaction to something. It's not liking it. So we recommend uh, washing it off straight away. Um, depending on what it is will mean you either rinse it off in warm water or cold water. So, for example, if you've got a thick cream, you want to wash it off with warm water because it's going to help melt it off your skin and get it off it safer and quicker. Uh, if it's something a lot lighter, you want to use a, a cold water or a cool water and that'll rinse it off okay without having to contribute to the heat content. Uh, what does that say? Have for wrinkles. <laughs> Keep smiling. No. <laughs> uh, we don't have anything for wrinkles at the moment. Um, I don't think it's really something we want to get into because we work on on products that are for irritations and irritated skin conditions. So wrinkles to us is more beauty related. So we don't tend to do the beauty side of things as much. We have um, a customer, obviously. 
she'd like okay. to put in an order tomorrow. Go so, for it. Sherry, you're more than welcome. Uh, there's a phone number down the bottom here. I've also put in the web page and the Facebook page, and you're more than welcome to press on those links and get on to Sai. And I'm sure that she would love to uh, make an order up for you. Absolutely love to. Yeah. And this is what we want to see. We want to uh, we want to encourage people to keep buying the products, even though you can't go out and buy it. We can get it to you, and we can work out a way. Payment schemes, can they uh, pay online or yeah. how does that work for you? Yeah, no, they can pay online. There's a credit card, direct debit, um, uh, online on the website. Um, it goes automatically through to um, PayPal. Hmm. So you could do it through PayPal. Um, there's a number of different ways we can we can organise payments, and that's never a problem. I want to know, can you, do you do your face scrubs? Uh, we did do a face scrub, but we've just faced it out, actually, funnily enough. Um, it wasn't a great seller, so I was having to throw it out more than what I sold. So, unfortunately, um, had to sort of delete that line. Um, but later in the year, we're going to be introducing new face scrubs, but in a teenage range. So, um, we're coming out with a teenage range later in the year. So, I'm looking really forward to that. So, oh, thanks. Thanks, uh, Faye. I actually, I actually have a story behind this as well. These are these are from my daughter's birth. So these are the um, there's there's a little thing that I made up that said uh, when I was at my baby shower, I got um, I asked all my um, all my friends and family and everything who were coming to bring a bead. And what we did as part of it was to thread it on to this to um for and for everybody to put sort of like a, a good wish or something on it so the birthing process would be um better i suppose like i don't know it was <laughs> it was just one of those things we did as a as a lovely thing for um for me to think that when i was there uh, everybody was present that kind of thing so this is actually a whole heap of beads that i got given for um in my baby shower we made a necklace out of it so thank you that's cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so with the teenage range, we're going to be doing the teenage range later in the year. Um, oh, we're just always working on stuff. I'm still working on the psoriasis treatment. That's seven years in the making now. So, um, you, you never give up. You've got to keep going all the time. Oh, I know. Well, We've been yeah. through about ten different types and none mm. of them really work out. But, yeah, getting there, getting there. So if people now watching this uh, now and in the future um, send in some information saying, please, so I, can you make some face scrubs so that we can make use of your product, would you yeah. then be looking at making it again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm always looking, like I'm always happy to make things for people. Um, I mean, most of my range has come about because people have asked me to make something. So... Mm. Um, so I will do that. And um, for example, like perfect example is sapwood was my mum's suggestion. So mm. um, yeah, so if that's something that people are looking at, not a problem at all. So mm. there's the story. Um, if you would like to know more about whether there are products available, you can always contact Sai, give her a phone call, go on to the Facebook page, any of that and ask if they have a product to fit a particular area that you're in need of. And if Sai doesn't, then she'll either look at making another one or she'll put you in touch with somebody that can. Am I incorrect in stating that? Yeah, that's no. perfect. <clears throat> perfect. No, no. <laughs> and if you buy enough, you, you might get a discount. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always send in free samples anyway. Ah, uh -huh, there you go. See, you get a free sample. Yeah, with always. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, is there anything else? Because we've got uh, about five we minutes to go. We so. didn't go into the sanitizers about the misconceptions around alcohol rubs and stuff. Is that something I really wanted to focus on? All right, you can get that in the last we, we slide. I've already put up the um, the link to the page that you mentioned. So yes. you're more than welcome to go for it. Give it a go. That'd be great. Excellent. No worries. So one of the things I wanted to talk about as well was misconceptions around hand sanitizers because there's a, a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of 
um, a lot of information that is conflicting. So um, there's a, a little link that's just come up about uh, hand sanitizer for, for the TGA. And the TGA is the Therapeutics Goods Administration here in Australia. So there's, there's more than one type of hand sanitizer out. So a lot of people are saying it's only good if it's 70% or some people are saying, oh, well, I'm hearing that 80% alcohol level is better. And there's, there's so much going on. And so I, I did actually, I'm just looking at my little notes here at the moment. So one of the thing is, yeah, that there are different levels. So with sanitizers, the CSIRO states anything between 62% and 71% alcohol volume will kill bacteria. So that basically means that um, if you had 100% alcohol, and watered it down with 38% water. So, or for example, if it was 100 mils, so you did um, 62 mils, uh, 62 mils and uh, of um, alcohol and 38 mils of water, that makes it uh, 62%. So anything from 62 to 71% will kill uh, bacteria. The thing is that it's better to use the lower percentage, so your 70%, 70% is the recommended percentage, but um, the, anything in that percentage is going to be effective. Higher levels actually don't kill it as effectively because it evaporates too quickly. What it needs to do is the alcohol needs to bind to the virus or the bacteria, break down the walls, break down the lipid coating, sorry, fat, fatty coating, break down the, the proteins and it can only do that when it's a lower percentage because otherwise it sits on it and then evaporates and it doesn't do anything so you actually do need a lower percentage using those high percentages is really really damaging to skin um and and it doesn't do the job as well as it should you'll also have a lot of conflicting information out there because uh there's certain name brands which are better than others and yada 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 so Dettol is one of the ones, one of the names out there that's that's a really well-known brand. Um, however, they are just a basic cosmetic um, sanitizer. So you've got therapeutic goods and you've got cosmetics. And the cosmetic ones are ones that are not regulated by the TGA. And they can still claim it kills 99.99% bacteria, providing it has had the right testing. So you cannot make that claim on a product until it has been tested. There's a number of different tests that can be done. So for, um, yeah, so for doing a 99.99% claim, it needs to have a type of uh, disinfectant testing, such as a time kill study. And, and that will uh, do study the disinfectant or the sanitizer on a particular microbe over a certain amount of time um and then with and then so that's that's okay for your standard one so that's normal for for any kind of use um home use and whatever your domestic use um however the ones that are tga regulated they need to go undergo a lot more testing um so the aquin brand for example that's part of ego pharmaceuticals i believe they are tga regulated and you'll know if something is tga regulated because at the bottom of the front of the label, there'll be an AUST and then L or R and then a number. So OST L or OST R with a number. And that shows that it's on the register for the TGA and that it's actually a listed medicine. Um, like listed medicines will be OST R, uh, listed complementary medicines will be an OST L. Um, so the Aquin brand is an OST R number which means that it can be used in hospital settings, clinical settings, uh, aged care facilities, all that kind of thing. It also means it's gone uh, undergone different tests. So it's done the, the time kill study, but also done hospital grade clinical use tests, uh, hand rub wash studies, virucidal studies, all that kind of thing. So there's actually a lot of uh, different studies that need to be done on sanitizers to be able to make claims. Um, and if you're saying, if a product says kills such and such virus, 
then that needs to have an OSTEL or OSTAR number on it because that needs to be regulated. So does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so we've got that on there. So the percentage is good. Um, just trying to see what else was on my notes here. Um, and also the other thing as well is that there's a formula um, available through the TGA. Um, and that's got a very specific formula. So because it's got on the 80% ethanol or 75% isopropyl alcohol, people are starting to believe that they need either 75 or 80%. But that's not exactly entirely correct either. That is just what the TGA uh, formula uh, has been put up that is excluded from the TGA for the duration of the COVID-19 crisis. So that's the particular formula that the TGA and the WHO are allowing hospitals um, and aged care settings and all that kind of thing to use uh, in the meantime without having to go through all the formalities of having all these different tests because they've already done the test and they're saying this is a test that is really good that works and you guys can use it providing that you've got good manufacturing practices you maintain good records etc etc so um yeah hope that makes sense <laughs> it did um, indeed yeah good excellent um a question there uh, i noticed you mentioned killed viruses now I was led to believe that um, most of these alcohol rubs and that can't kill viruses. They can kill bacteria, but they can't kill viruses. How um, correct is that? Okay. So they, with the viruses, you need to have the proper TGA testing to claim it. So most of the time, different alcohol levels will able to penetrate the, the lipid and uh, protein barriers around a virus, and they will be able to actually destroy the virus. But you cannot make the claim of being able to kill the virus until you have the proper testing. And the proper testing is thousands of dollars. So it's easier to just take that off of off of the label and not have to do the testing and just go, okay, no worries. We're just going to keep it as kills 99.99% of bacteria. Does that make which, sense? Yeah, which would be um, responsive of just about every hand sanitizer there is. Yeah. Uh, so it it's, um, yeah, so it, it prob probably does. It probably would kill um, viruses and probably would do that but it does need to be a certain percentage of alcohol. Basically, I think anything over 80% isn't isn't gonna work because it does need to have that watered down content to be able to do it. Um, but like I said, to be able to say that it does kill a virus, um, you do need to get the appropriate testing for that. If there is anybody out there that has a question, now is the time mm. to be typing away madly because... Yeah. Uh, we're heading towards the end. Uh, are there any other things on your list that you have not brought up that you should bring up that you can bring up? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't get to mention about my little alcohol rubs, but that's okay. Anyone? No, that go knows? for it. Go for it. Yeah, that's all right. I, I've looked at the, the... because of our delay last time. I've, yeah. I've looked at it, and we're we're about fifteen minutes down. So go oh, for that's it. Okay. Yeah, so we do, uh, during this pandemic, we have come up with an alcohol rub um, hand sanitizer as well. And it's an all natural, uh, all natural version. So it does have your ethanol content. Uh, we have, it's infused with andrographis and andrographis is known to be a very powerful super herb. It's, um, it's a antiviral, antibacterial, antiseptic type herb. Um, it's also so you've got green tea extract in it and witch hazel. Um, love witch hazel. So uh, witch hazel is one of those um, antiseptic type um, herbs as well. So it does have um, all your natural ones in there. And we're really happy to be able to provide that to a lot of country areas throughout this crisis that weren't able to access any kind of hand sanitizer at all. So um, even though it's not something we really look Think we're going to be making long term it was really good to be able to supply those people in the short term so they had something at least so what would be the difference between like the liquid hand hand uh, alcohol rub that you have which we mm -hmm. use and a gel hand rub 
is there much difference or is it just <laughs> something to uh, make it easier to come out tube yeah basically that like we all know that liquid's a lot harder to be able to apply because it runs around every runs everywhere um the gels obviously have gelling agents in them but the thing is that the gelling agents are really hard to come by at the moment um, packaging is hard to come by there's a lot that's still really really hard to come by at the moment so um, using your liquid ones without a gelling agent is um, one of the more effective ways to still be able to sanitize your hands. It's not going to make it like more effective or less effective. Um, it's just that it's got one less ingredient in it, basically. So I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to say which would be better, yours or one bought from the supermarket? Depends what brand it is so um yeah it really does depend what brand it is most of them i'm still actually waiting for my testing to come back um so i can actually claim the 99.99 percent um i'm pretty confident that it does anyway um but the ones in the supermarkets you just got to make sure that it has had the right testing on it and it will usually say on there if it has been tested and in, in, in accordance to whatever number um some in supermarkets probably aren't the greatest, um, but the best one, which is used like for, for health professionals who are in clinical settings, ACOM is the better one because it is TGA regulated. Um, that's, mm. it's, a, it's medicated basically. So yeah. that's a medicated one. Mine is a complementary because it's, it's natural. Um, okay. A lot of the time you won't get you won't get this kind of thing into a hospital because complementary medicines are often rejected by medical staff, even though they're just as good as anything else. Yeah, that's a, it's a big argument out there. And I think the only people that are stopping it are the big farmers. They, they want to control everything and anything organic. Mm. does not work as good as mine because I have the chemicals. They only have the original product yeah it's yeah it's a bit tough it's a bit of a bone of contention with me as well natural products have been around for thousands of years but it's just the the uh, medicinal products have had lots of scientific studies and in our in our universe at the moment um people um everything's all about what's been tested what science backs but science is pretty new really compared to um all the natural stuff that's been around for years and has got plenty of use it's yeah it's it's really hard um in our society to try and get that balance and it's quite quite unfortunate that there's a lot of people out there who are very single-minded about medical is the only way to go um well there's medical and natural you can still have a balance and you can still see the value in both so um i think it's a bit unfair on some people to be so single-minded and and one-eyed about these things if you look at history i mean long before science had anything to do with the pharmaceuticals there were women picking herbs and using them for a variety of illnesses so to say that organic is uh, it's not as good would be basically like saying that uh, sewage water was much better than normal water only because it has scientific chemicals run for it. So yeah. I, I'm a great, great believer in the organic because yeah. the organic has all of the elements rather than taking out specific elements to make a particular thing work. Yeah. Uh, a plant has a a plant is very synergistic it's got a lot of different constituents in it that are going to be valuable in different areas yeah. Yeah. um and the thing is when you pull out just just one of those compounds it's very easy to overdose on things as well they're they're in plants at, at certain levels for a certain reason yeah. um and yeah. and it can be very dangerous when when it's used inappropriately so um like i'm a big I'm a big fan of microdosing, where yeah. you just do small amounts um, over time rather yeah. than big doses because your body essentially can't handle such big doses all the time and it will reject it and 
whole heap of other issues, but everybody's mm. different. Everybody knows how their, their body works. Some people can handle those those bigger amounts, but a lot of the time I do tend to, to um, go from the smaller amounts anyway. Um, but, yeah, for, for medical people to reject all the natural, they're yeah. essentially rejecting history. So, yeah, um, yeah they, there just needs to be a balance there. I love the idea of the, the micro dosing. I mean, it sounds very much like Bowen therapy. I know they use various. Uh, look, uh, you know, people laugh at Bowen therapy, but. Oh, no, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, they use very low doses. Um, <laughs> and they're relying on what is being transmitted through the, the water or whatever they're using as the medium. Mm. Um, rather than giving out the initial dose which would be way too high they're yeah. microdosing and it still seems to work so mm. science is baffled how does it work ah oh, i don't know it's psychosomatic they must have been cured before yeah. they had the disease crap yeah that's mm. is there anything else that you would like to put forward ah uh, not at this stage i mean we could babble on for hours for a lot more <laughs> so and I just want to say, uh, with Faye, she said, oh, you're in my old hunting ground. I went to Hendon Primary School. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you might know where we are. We're, we're opposite the great big uh, orange <coughs> storage building. So in the mm. afternoon, our shop gets a big orange aura come through the shop because it's reflecting off the big building. So she probably yeah. knows where we are. Or you can call in when you pick up your local wines and your beers by calling the BWS and just walk across the, the pathway to the, to the other just, side and pick up your herbal stuff as well from. at the same yep. time. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have the olive oil. So if you do want to buy olive oil, we um, we do have olive oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, which is my mum's from the hills. So it is fresh and... Um, we, you can decant it. So we actually have it in um, in big jars and you can bring your own bottle as long as it's sanitised or use one of the bottles we've got here and you can decant it and pour out your own olive oil here as well. And um, obviously we've got all the medicinal herbs and spices and baby care and normal skin care and heaps of stuff. We've got... Oh, heaps yeah, of stuff, yes. So much. Um, what the, I was going to... You, you, Got me going off track. I, I something you said was I was going to jump on it and go yeah, but yeah. Um, I've got to go olive. through that. What the comments back? The olive oil, uh, been there, done that. Very nice. Uh, we've been using some of that, and that's wonderful. Oh, stuff. good, good. Um, <clears throat> ah, I know what it was. Can you just throw out some prices for your um, alcohol rub so ah. that people know how much they're looking at? Yep, sure, no worries. So we've got the two sizes. we got the alcohol rub in a 125 mil, and that's 9.95. Uh, we've got the little mini, little mini pocket one. Love this one. It's just, it's so small, like perfect, perfect size for your hand, um, or pocket, or wallet, or whatever. And these are only 2.95. And I do have these available on the website at the moment. Um, we also do alcohol refills, so. If you want to refill like a litre bottle or something like that, you can come in and we do special prices for you. It was $6 per 100 mils because the price of ethanol at the time was really high. I've been able to source ethanol at a lot cheaper price. So it's um, about $5 or $4 litre at the moment. Um, 100 mils, not a litre. I keep saying that and get caught out. I mean, 4 to $5 um, per 100 mils um but depending on how much you order we, we can work out a price now so yeah we can do refills now as well oh and because the sapwood was really popular as well i should put out a price there as well so sapwood um is 12.95 so that's a really good price for that um the buddha balm is a bit more expensive because it's a lot more expensive to make so this is about 19 dollars for that one um they do last for ages though the creams spread really well and they do last a long time so um yeah i uh it's very I comparable that. to um the body shop so the, the yeah. prices are brilliant so that that's except good. ours is way better <laughs> oh yeah of course <laughs> so i wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> <laughs> we um we hand make everything here as well we don't 
use machines or anything like everything is done uh with a hand like the hand making method and mm -hmm. when we do that we we think that um because we have that belief belief of flow of energy and everything um that we have the good energy going through at the same time not just something mechanical that's making it um plus on the other side of things for if we're making it that means we're giving jobs to people um we might not be able to make the huge amounts like other companies do, but at least we're being able to provide work to people. Well, I certainly hope that you gain something out of this broadcast, even if it's not today or tomorrow. Hopefully people watching in replay will take up your services at some point. Thanks. Uh, I would like to thank you, and I will put you into the lobby shortly while I finish up, and we can catch up a little bit afterwards. Yep. But thank you very much for joining us today and, and passing on the information. It's been very informative. So, thank you. And thanks namaste. for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me and inviting me on today. It's been fun. Okay. Catch up with you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> See ya. Bye. I pressed the wrong button. I'm always doing that. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much to Cy Glasson from Garden Gypsy, Shop 3, 36 Tapneys Hill Road, Royal Park. If you need to, you can go into the comments and you can uh, find the links that will draw you to both the article that Cy was talking about and to the web page and the Facebook page that was on there. Please consider giving Sai a phone call or uh, sending her a message through Messenger and I'm sure that she will certainly work out orders for you. Um, and if you're over in America and you want this stuff, believe me, I'm sure Sai will get it there as quick as she can. You've got more problems than we do at the moment. So now to finish off, uh, thank you very much. Hopefully next week we will have another broadcast on Adelaide uh, psychic fair online and as well as that uh, we will hopefully bring you some new people next week it's always a bit of a worry but uh, people are wonderful until they have to come on board and then they they get all tongue-tied and have trouble talking so we keep trying to bring them on if you're interested in uh, coming along to the markets, so you can check us out at Market to Market SA. Check their events page. I'm sure that you can uh, log into that. Or you can go straight to Facebook, Adelaide Psychic Fair, and check when we're uh, going to be back in about in 2.30 Flinders Street in the city. Hopefully it's going to be shortly. We don't want to leave it too much longer. I'm getting bored at home. Um, you can go onto that site and if you're wanting to have a stall or participate in doing this, we will continue to have this on once the fair begins again in any case so that we can keep people up to date and informed. You can check out me on uh, 0412 if you wish to participate in the broadcast or if you wish to be in the markets when they begin again. Thank you very much for joining me and I wish you a good weekend and hopefully if you're lucky and you're in South Australia, you can go down into the country and have a bit of a drive this weekend. The government says it's all right. So you go out there and have a go. Lovely to have you on board and I hope to catch you next week. <laughs>